Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore here for Simon Says Stamp with the Mother's Day 2019 limited edition card kit and I've got a couple of projects to share with you today including the sweet critter card and a couple of stenciled muslin bags. I'm going to start by sharing what's in the kit including muslin bags, some Heidi Swap lace, some Nouveau Glimmer Paste that I'll be using, this really pretty black and white ribbon, a palette knife, a die, a stamp pad, some sentiments you can trim apart easily, sequins, this paper pad with double-sided papers, three envelopes, the Bouquet of Roses stencil, the four all moms six by eight stamp set with lots of sentiments and images, kind of a great variety for all moms, some masking paper, and then finally five sheets of cardstock. So you are getting a ton of fabulous product and lots of ways to, or lots of things you can create with this kit. I am taking some of the plastic packaging from my kit and I actually, folded it up first and then realized I didn't think that would stencil very good. So I'm just going to cut it into um, a couple of widths and stick this down in my bag to protect the back of the bag from the front where I'm stenciling it. I'm going to take the bouquet of roses stencil and the pink opal glimmer paste included in the kit. So remember the muslin bag, the stencil, the glimmer paste, paste and the palette knife are all included in this limited edition Mother's Day kit. I'm masking off the leaves to start with so that only the roses have glimmer paste on them and I positioned it kind of off to the right side if you will. That plastic inside the muslin bag will protect the back of the bag from any of the product that might leak through the front. And I'm going to leave that in while I work on each step of this design. I'm going to put a thin layer of glimmer paste over the roses. I worked in small areas with a small bit of glimmer paste at a time so that it did not bleed through and ruin the the uh, design underneath the stencil, because I didn't necessarily tape it down. I'm working over a dimensional project or fabric product here, and I simply want to get these roses in place. I'm doing a thin layer. I don't want this to be super chunky. It's going to have some texture to it, and of course that incredible glimmery, uh, glittery finish. Now I can easily then lift up this stencil, take the stencil with my little masks on it over to another muslin bag because several come in this kit and I can go ahead and do another bag. So I did two of them this way. I'll save the rest of the muslin bags for another project at another time, but I did do two of these just like this. In fact, both bags are going to be exactly the same. And I'll just position this second one and go ahead and add the glimmer paste. Now I did let that set and dry for probably about a good 45 minutes while I went and did something else. When I came back, it was completely dry. I had cleaned my palette knife and stencil. You want to clean those right away because the product does kind of dry quickly and it will want to stay put. I'm going to line up the stencil then on the muslin bag with the roses and you can mask them off if you want to. I just tried to work kind of carefully in small areas. I am taking some green apple dye ink from Simon Says Stamp and adding color to the leaves now with a dye ink and a life-changing brush. This is going to add awesome green leaves to the stenciled bag and finish the design off beautifully. Let me stencil these last couple of leaves and when I lift up the stencil, you will see how gorgeous this is. 
and there is the bag with the bouquet of roses stencil right on it. Let's go ahead and take the second one. I'm just gonna show again, lining up the roses with the stencil and then quickly stenciling those right onto the bag. This is a dye ink, it's going to dry very quickly. That plastic we have inside the bag will protect anything that might leak through while we're waiting for it to dry. Once I have all of my stenciling done, I can go ahead and set aside the bouquet of roses stencil and move on to adding a sentiment. You could definitely leave your bag as is if you want to. I chose to add a Mother's Day sentiment since this is the Mother's Day card kit. And we are going to stamp a couple uh, or a phrase and a word from the For All Moms stamp set that is included in the kit. And I'm going to take my sentiments and kind of figure out where I want to put them, the placement, and I'm going to shift them over to the left and I am gonna use my Misty so that I can stamp them more than once if I need to. The muslin bag is still flat, so it will fit in the Misty and it does work pretty easily to stamp this. And I did stamp my sentiments at least twice just because we're stamping on an uneven surface um, over some stenciling and things, and I wanted to make sure that I got the best, darkest impression that I could get. So I stamped the phrase, you're the best first, and above that, I am going to stamp the scripty word mom. I went ahead and stamped both bags with you're the best first before cleaning my stamp and putting the mom stamp into the Misty. So this is a great little kind of assembly line style idea if you wanted to make a bunch of these, if you wanted to make these for party favors or shower favors or whatever it is for whatever occasion it might be. Um, I think these would make pretty little wedding shower little uh, favors and other little party type things just by switching up your sentiment or maybe leaving a sentiment off altogether and just changing up the colors you use for the stenciling. Again, we're gonna do both bags exactly the same, but you could switch up the sentiments if you wanna do to have a bag for several different occasions. Little treats, small gifts, jewelry, uh, little makeup items would all fit in here great. Now I removed the drawstring from the muslin bag and I've put a safety pin through one end of the ribbon included in the kit. And I am gonna thread that through my muslin bag and replace the drawstring that comes in it with a ribbon closure instead. This black and white ribbon ties in nicely with the black stamping I used for the sentiment on the bag. So that was definitely intentional. I wanted to dress it up a little bit more than the drawstring would allow. I simply unknotted the drawstring. I'm gonna keep it because it can be used again, but I also think that the ribbon ties the bag together a lot tighter. Look at that. And then you can tighten a bow, you could knot it, um, whatever you wanna do. I tied little bows because I think that's kind of cute, but you can, Obviously finish that however you want. It ties it up nicely. It has a beautiful little decorative touch. I'm going to do this for both bags. Both will feature this little uh, ribbon drawstring closure instead of the other little cord that was in there. And I would save that other cord because you can use that on lots of different projects. So just a fun idea for customizing your muslin gift bags a little more. Here I'm gonna just show that I am unknotting it. I didn't wanna cut that off because I wanna save this. Great for tags and other little um, projects like that where you might want a string, ornaments, whatever it might be. Again, I put my safety pin through one end of the ribbon and quickly threaded it through the channel on the drawstring bag. And I wanna make sure that it's not twisted up inside so I kind of run it through with my fingers, flatten it out, make sure that it's perfectly flat up there at the top. 
The final thing I'm going to do is I heated up my heat tool and I've got some little gems that I am hot gluing in place because this is fabric and I didn't want to use a liquid adhesive. I used hot glue to glue on some little acrylic hearts that pop at the end of the loop in the word mom. And we're just going to hot glue those in place. I'm using the crystal katana to perfectly place those. You can then tie up the drawstring bag with the ribbon and secure it with a bow or a knot. And these beautiful little mom gift bags are all finished. For the next project, I am gonna share this fun card that's great for pet lovers. So maybe you are a fur baby mama. I am, I have a dog. This I decided to do a cat card because I love this cat. I love this cat holding a heart in its mouth. And I am gonna use lots of images from the For All Moms stamp set included in the kit. I'm gonna use the cat, the butterfly, and the paw print. These are all gonna be stamped with a black ink that can be used for Copic coloring. We will be using the Hero Arts Intense Black Ink. I lined those up. I removed the sentiments for now, and I'm going to stamp these all with a black ink. Now the one thing is, is they're kind of all out in, in outer space right now. To ground this, I'm going to use pattern paper from the kit and cardstock from the kit to make a border along the bottom edge, but I don't want the cat's tail to be covered up. So there's a little trick to that. Before we do that, I am gonna stamp my sentiments. In the kit, a soft navy stamp pad, ink pad is included, and also some, um, or pardon me, and then from my stash, I pulled out Caribbean blue. I pulled those colors directly from the pattern paper I'm using. So the mama, was stamped with Caribbean blue, the lighter blue ink that is from my stash. Then we're using the soft navy ink included in the kit for the rest of the phrases. The first phrase, it's Mother's Day and no critter could ask for a better mama. So just a really fun, punny type of greeting, great for any cat lover. Then I'm going to take some of the pattern paper in the kit and cut a strip for the bottom edge of my card. And as I mentioned, this is gonna go along the bottom edge, but if you lay it down, you're gonna cover up the tail. And I think you miss some of the detail there, but I definitely think the cat needs to be grounded. So I wanted him to look like he's sitting on this ledge. And to do that, I am going to take an X-Acto knife and only cut out the tail. I know that sounds like it might be kind of a hard thing or kind of uh, time consuming. It actually was super, super easy. And I think it's a great little way to make your card just flow a little nicer. So see if I put that where it really needs to go, it is going to cover up so much of the cat's tail and you lose that detail. So let's grab our Tim Holtz X-Acto knife, a craft knife, and let's very, very gently and slowly trace the tail, really from the base where it meets the cat's body all the way around to the paw. And I worked super slow, and I went over the image multiple times. I use pretty thick cardstock. This is some of the 120 pound weight cardstock. And so I worked really slow and then I just kind of kept trying to pop it up. And if it wouldn't pop up and it wasn't cut all the way through, I went back over it with my X-Acto knife, just following that channel I've already traced. I probably need to replace the blade in my knife. It probably would work a little bit better, but I did just go over this multiple times and that seemed to work pretty well. So we're just gonna finish here. And I did extend that all the way up the cat's tail to where it meets the base of the body as I mentioned. So there it's popped up maybe one little catch, so I'll just go over that. And that is perfect. And so I can now pop that little border underneath and my cardstock strip, which is the soft navy cardstock included in the kit. 
I don't want to get Copic marker accidentally on my pattern paper strip. So I'm going to go ahead and color my cat first and the tail, and then I can put my pattern paper in place. I'm using warm gray five for the base of the cat here. We're going to do kind of a gray on gray striped kitty. So warm gray five is the base, warm gray seven and eight. Seven will be my blending color. Eight is going to be the stripe I add to the cat when I'm done. Now the lighter area, the underbelly of the cat is warm gray two and warm gray zero zero. Although most of the zero zero gets covered up because I'm going to feather in a little warm gray five and blend it with warm gray two in a bit. I like to always err on the side of caution and start light and work my way to darker colors. So I added in the warm gray seven and I'm going to go back with warm gray five and blend any of that out. I've left the insides of the ears. We'll add a little soft pink to those in a bit and then even add um, a little warm gray over the top of that to mute the pink just a bit. Here are the stripes created with warm gray eight all the way around the kitty, around the tail, the legs. I want to add that everywhere. And I didn't really like that last one, so I quickly blended that out with my marker. R00 for the insides of the ears, R20 for the nose, and warm gray one for blending out the pink on the insides of the ears. R35 and 37 for the heart coming out of the kitty's mouth, which I absolutely love. That's what really spoke to me. I thought that was so sweet. And we're also going to color the heart on the paw print with those same two colors. Now that I have the cat colored, I did go ahead and adhere my pattern paper strip to the bottom. I added some adhesive. I tucked that under the edge so that the cat's tail's up on top, and then I'm putting some thin double-sided tape on my soft navy cardstock strip, and then popping that along the top edge of the stripe border that we're using. Really quick and easy way to add a little pattern to the base of the card and ground our image while we're at it. Let's color in the remaining couple of images. We've got our paw print, which is gonna be colored with some mint colors. I tried to emulate the aqua color in the stripe paper. And I added black glaze pen to the cat's eyes so that will dry while I'm coloring. And dark grays for the butterfly body as well. G00, 02, and 09 were used for the paw print. It's going to be this great little minty color. The G9 was used very sparingly. And then the butterfly, we're going to pull out some of the pink color from our stripe paper with our 81, 83, and 85. And that rounds out the coloring for our fun card design. We'll add some white highlights to the cat's eyes now that the black glaze pen has dried. We're gonna take our pin and add some little highlights to the cat as well. Just here and there, we'll add some little dots to the butterfly wings to dress those up a little bit. And we'll also be using some glossy accents on some of the areas of the image, including the nose on the cat, the heart hanging out of its mouth, and the paw print. So here is the white pin detail, adding just little dots to the butterfly's body. And then we'll go around the cat and just add some fun little highlights here. A highlight to the heart on both the one hanging out of its mouth and the one in the paw print.
and the eye smudged a little so I actually had gone back over that with a black glaze pen again and I'll go back in and add that white highlight once it's completely dry. Glossy accents also on the body of our butterfly to give it a little of a glossy finish. I have a precision tip on my glossy accents to help make drawing in these small areas much easier. Originally I just did the heart on the paw print but I did go back in and add glossy accents to the entire paw print to really make that stand out. We're going to add adhesive to the front of a side fold card base and then we will pair this fun critter Mother's Day card with one of the envelopes included in the kit, the mint envelope. I hope this has given you a few ideas of just a couple of things that you can do with the incredible Mother's Day limited edition card kit from Simon Says Stamp. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these muslin bags and critter mama's day card that I made with the Simon Says Stamp limited edition Mother's Day card kit. The supplies I used to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more cards featuring Simon Says Stamp stamps and dies you might be interested in. Thanks for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.